my father, uh, a farm boy who had grown up just knowing farming, was offered a job at a place called Lion Boiler and Machine Company. And this company taught him to be a welder, which was amazing because that is the way he earned his living the rest of his life. Uh, so he worked at this company and was able to buy a small house. We visited the house since I've been an adult, so it was really small. To me then it seemed big. Uh, but he stayed there until uh, I was about 12 years old. And schools were segregated in those days. But um, uh, Rockefeller, John D. Rockefeller, a very rich man, as you know, from the East, East Coast, for some reason, I guess, built, uh, helped black people in the South, and I suppose it's the reason he happened to know something about Smackover was that it was an oil boom town. But he built a school for blacks because the schools were segregated, a frame building with about seven or eight rooms to house each grade and an auditorium. And for the playground, there was a basketball hoop and a lot of pine trees that we climbed on for fun. But uh, we had teachers for elementary and through high school and all in there, and the most dedicated people I've ever known or would ever expect to know. They, uh, in my grade, when I was ready, when I was about 14, we had one teacher who decided to keep all of the seventh graders in, which were about 10 kids in the seventh grade, kept us in during recess period and tutored us so that we, when we finished seventh grade, we had also finished eighth grade. And I remember I was 12 years old and which this teacher sacrificed herself because she also didn't have recess. And in those days, uh, very few people, if any, maybe one or two of the teachers, that, a few or maybe the principal of the school, had enough books at home for people, kids to do their homework. Instead, the teachers tutored you. And uh, if you didn't get your homework done, they kept you in recess until you did it. You didn't take your homework home because parents did not have books, neither did they have the know-how uh, to help kids with their homework. So when I left Smikeover, my parents decided that uh, we should move north. Everybody, many people in the South those days were wanting to migrate to the north uh, because a few people had gone and told what came back to Smikeover with fur coats and told about living next door to white people and the wonderful life you had. So people wanted, people were constantly trying to improve themselves. So my mother and dad, my first, my, that same aunt that preceded us to smike over, preceded us to Harvey, Illinois, she and her husband. And we later got on the train, Jim Crow train, with our lunch packed in a little shoebox, fried chicken, I remember that. And it came to Illinois, landed in Chicago. And of course, I was shocked. At, I just was so excited about Chicago. I begged my parents to live there, and they said, no way would we raise you in Chicago. So they took us to a small town, Harvey, right outside of Chicago. I entered the school system there, having just finished seventh grade in Smikeover with about 12 kids in my class. And no library, just the teacher teaching us everything. And instead of going into the eighth grade, I was put in the ninth grade. Now that shows you what that small school did. Uh, I had never been in close association with white people ever because our parents had kept us as segregated from them as they wanted to be from us. Uh, but I was in a class of 500 and the only black girl in my class. So, but I was a very quiet person and finished the upper third of my class. Uh, just because I had this wonderful background, 
reading, writing, and arithmetic in Smykova. That's it. No art, no nothing. 